One of the biggest concerns if you're a tortoise keeper, the one question I get hit up with all the time is, what can I do about pyramiding? What is pyramiding? Should I be worried about it? Well, today we are gonna talk in depth about pyramiding in tortoises. I'm gonna tell you what's acceptable, how to defend against it, and when just not to worry about it. A good portion of my life has been all about action still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. All right, so we're in amongst my redfoot tortoises and I want to show you because some of these animals have some pyramiding. Now you can see right here this is what I would describe as minimal pyramiding. Um, you know it doesn't really affect the animal. Now pyramiding is these raised scoots for those of you who don't know or are new to tortoise keeping. And each scoot on the shell uh, has this kind of three-dimensional profile uh, and it comes up like a pyramid, but as we'll find out some of these can be really quite grotesque So scientists don't really know exactly what causes pyramiding. They don't know if it's poor diet uh, They don't know if it's humidity at an early age um, But there have been some keepers that have kept their animals in a more humid or gave them a humid uh, Hide and that has helped them grow very good smooth shells over the course of their lives as long as the diet and UVB requirements from the Sun are also met so you see moving along we have another tortoise and this is where it's starting to get a little bit more of a deformity in the shell so that nice round shell that you're going for on some of these other animals nice round smooth shell you see there's very little raising of the scoots on that well you can kind of see how this one it's changing the actual shape of the shell and that's where things kind of get into trouble because now when you're talking about an animal whose vertebrae are attached to the back of their shell, the inside back of their shell. If this grows deformed, it can cause mobility problems and some pyramiding or some shell deformities are caused by metabolic bone disease, which is not giving the animal the proper foods or the proper sunlight, the UVB light that all basking reptiles have to have. So, we come now to our third red foot who has definitely been pyramided. Now this animal behaves naturally, it walks around. Actually, uh, this animal's reproduced and laid very healthy eggs. It doesn't bother me so much. But as a tortoise keeper, we're trying to go as smooth as possible because we know that is what the tortoises look like. That's what they're supposed to be like. So it's important that we try and give them everything they need so that they don't grow in a way that hinders their mobility. So again, pyramiding, in this species, it's, it's kind of common in, in redfoot tortoises in captivity, not so much in the wild, because these animals come from a more human environment. Uh, so they come from an area where as uh, hatchlings, they're able to find those humid hides. So that's why it's important to set up a humid hide if you have a baby tortoise. Don't feed it so much or overfeed it because I have a theory that overfeeding caused them to grow too quickly and gives them those raised scoots. Um, but as we'll find out in some of the next tortoises we're about to see, sometimes pyramiding can happen in the wild. And I'm gonna show you some leopard tortoises that have some pyramiding. Okay, so we're now in with my leopard tortoises, and here are two examples of leopard tortoises with some pyramiding. Now, all of these were captive born and bred, and they were all raised up by the same guy, a friend of mine who I purchased this whole group from. So what's interesting is some of them are mildly pyramided, that's what I call a mild pyramiding in the leopard tortoise, and then some have more pronounced pyramiding, but they were all fed and kept the exact same way. So what does this mean? Well, I think it means that the leopard tortoise is a animal that is predisposed to pyramiding and they even pyramid in the wild. Uh, so before these animals stopped being sent over here in the United States when they shut the importation down on this species, uh, you would find animals that were wild caught that had some pyramiding to their shells. Um, some scientists believe that when the leopard tortoises spin upside down, when they're flipped upside down, the pyramiding actually helps them 
right themselves because they don't stay upside down very long. You see that? They roll right over. Watch that again. You could just see that with minimal movement, this animal would be able to right itself. See that? So they think that because it comes to a point and they live in such flat grasslands, that that was one way why pyramiding came in handy. And here's some other, some others are coming over and you can just see the different levels. Now, like I said, all of these guys were fed the exact same foods and uh, raised up in the exact same way. So it doesn't really bother me with this species because it's not a very grotesque pyramiding. It's not so pronounced that, you know, there's some kind of metabolic bone disease issue. So that is something that you have to just accept in certain species. Uh, so many people freak out when they see slightly raised scoots. I don't want you guys to do that. If you're new tortoise keepers, don't worry. As long as you're feeding them the right foods, you're providing all the necessary ingredients for these animals to have healthy lives, it's okay. You're gonna get some pyramiding. Guys, also take this into consideration. These animals live in harsh environments. The wind, the sand, the, some species burrow. They are eroding their shells just by being out there in the wilderness. So it could just be some that we are not seeing pyramiding because we haven't been keeping tortoises in captivity for so long. Uh, that's why we're seeing this and, and the ones that are in the wild are eroding. So don't worry about that. But I'm gonna show you one more tortoise right now before we go and it's my Galapagos tortoise, Socrates. I wanna show you what's going on with his pyramiding and show you the new growth. All right, so finally, the last tortoise I wanna show you that I have that had some pyramiding, and when I first got him, he was much smaller. He's uh, 11 years old right now. It's Socrates, my young Galapagos tortoise. Here he is right now. And I wanna show you what can happen when you start feeding these animals the proper diet. So when I got Socrates, he was just about that big. And these bumps here, these pyramids were very close together and it was looking pretty bad. I actually bought him sight unseen. I put the money down and then got the animal and they raised them up indoors because Galapagos tortoises are so endangered and expensive that they're afraid to put them outside for fear of predators. Um, I don't care if my tortoise is 60,000 bucks. I'm gonna put that animal outside. I want it to live outside because as you know, one of the hypotheses or theories to pyramiding is improper UVB lighting, which we've been discussing. But the other thing um, that I did is I just got him outdoors and didn't overfeed him, let him do his grazing, let him do his browsing, and then fed him a couple times a week. Not overfeeding him because speedy growth will cause that pyramiding, the nutrients goes right into his shell, and they can feel their shell's a living part of their body. The shell has nerve endings, you see this? He likes getting scratched. Um, the shell grows with them, so you want it to grow slow and steady, just like the tortoise. So in summary, guys, you can somewhat correct new growth you cannot ever get rid of the pyramiding. But I'm happy with the way this animal's turning out. Uh, he's got character, he's healthy, and that's all that I care about. So, to finish up here our lesson on pyramiding, feeding too much, feeding the wrong foods, not having a humid hide when the animal is young and the shell's developing, and then finally, the UVB lighting, very important. So, put all those together, do the right thing by your tortoise. If you see some pyramiding, don't freak out. But if things are grotesque, you know you're doing something wrong and you're gonna to wanna to look at your husbandry and what you're feeding that animal. I hope this helps out. New tortoise keepers, I'm Ken and Harkin. This is Socrates, I love you, buddy. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Camp Kennan. You can Snapchat me, at Camp Kennan as well. And we've got a Facebook page, Camp Kennan. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and the tortoises. See you soon. Later, socks.